Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video features this new set botanical leaves from the Gina K June 2022 release. It has three different types of uh, tropical leaves that are all really generously sized. And so today I'm going to be doing two types of no-line watercoloring. I am going to be using the Gina K Amalgam Ink in Whisper. Um, this is a really great ink for no-line watercoloring. Uh, but I do, and this is just me, um, I stamp it two times. First of all, it's hard to get a really great impression on uh, watercolor paper the first time you stamp it. Second of all, I like to be sure, especially with a card like this where I've got a lot of things going on, that I can actually see the lines really well. So stamping it twice is what works best for me, but you do whatever works best for you. So once I get that stamped on a second time, then I'm going to create a mask. There's a lot going on in this card background. I'm not going to pretend like there isn't, um, but I wanted the background to be really full because I knew my sentiment was going to be pretty simple. The masking tape that I am using today is the Eclipse masking tape. Uh, it just comes on a roll. It's one of my favorite ones to use. Um, so I'm just going to ink it up in that same ink because, well, it's handy, honestly. And then I'm going to stamp that down and then I'm going to trim out my mask. I'm going to fussy cut that out. I'm not going to show you that part because I already knew this video was going to be a little bit longer and that's not the point of our video. The point of our video is the watercoloring. So I've trimmed that mask out. I'm going to put that in place and then I am going to stamp my next leaf. So in looking at the leaves in here, you guys know if you watch my videos, I'm a big fan of Googling how they actually look. So I kind of know what I'm getting into going into it. And so the Monstera I knew, um, that's the first leaf that I stamped. I knew what the Monstera looked like because I'm growing one in my kitchen. I have been growing one in a pot in my kitchen for like two years now, year and a half. And it's doing relatively well. Um, but so that one, I kind of had an idea of what colors that it came in. I did take some liberties. But again, it's my card. I do what I want. Um, but this one, um, and also the palm. The other one is the palm. And I clearly knew what that looked like without having to do any sort of Googling. Um, but this one, I was a little bit unsure. I was like, what is this? And so I was talking to another friend of mine she was giving me what she thought it was. So then I was Googling that. And what I've discovered is that I think it's a caladium. Cal caladium? I think that's how you say it. Otherwise known, it has many different um, kind of like variations and colors. But one of them is called um, the Heart of Jesus. So obviously, that was an easy pick for me to decide how I was going to color this thing right? And it ended up working out to be a way that I could kind of show you two different ways to watercolor. So I stamped two of the Monstera leaves and then I was not, because I'm not a crazy person. I mean, I am a little bit crazy, but like an acceptable level of crazy, not like an un, not like a so crazy I can't be out in the world, just like a regular level of crazy. Um, I was not cutting out masks for these palms. So I already knew that I was going to put them in the background. Um, so once I have everything else masked off, then I'm going to go ahead and stamp my palm fronds. So I did one in between these up here up top, and then I'm going to do one at the bottom. That one does end up looking like it's on top um, just because of the way that I painted it. And that is kind of the benefit of the secondary way of doing the watercoloring, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, it ended up it ended up working out. So even though it does look a little bit busy, especially from a stamping standpoint, you know, when you've got all this crazy stuff going on in the background and then you remove the masks and you literally can't see anything on the camera. <laughs> well, maybe you can if you're watching on your TV. But I mean, it's meant to be um, kind of pale so that when we're done painting it, it looks like I'm the super talented watercolor artist that just freehanded all of these leaves. Uh, I am not. Um, Gina Kay's illustrator is very talented and drew these. I just was lucky enough to be able to work with it and follow along. So here's that second stamping of the palm front, and then that's going to be it for the stamping of the background for us. And we're going to move on to removing these masks and starting the watercolor. So, I, you know, I love removing the masks. It looks like magic, except for this time, it's not really so much magic because it's hard to see the images. Uh, but that's okay. The magic's going to happen when we add the watercolor. 
I am using my Daniel Smith watercolors. I keep them, these actually, these cases are originally meant, um, it's a Tim Holtz case for alcohol inks, uh, but I don't use it for that. I use it for my watercolors and it works perfectly well. So the first way that we're going to watercolor is a little bit more controlled. Um, we are going to kind of section out this leaf and then add our pigment in once we have the entirety of the um, leaf filled in with water. So we're going to, well, I should say this section, the entirety of this section. So there was like three sections toward the bottom that all kind of flowed really nicely together. With this particular type of water coloring, you want to make sure that you are filling in an area that is going to make sense that there's a break there. So basically I watercolored these three together knowing that I would be able to hit a breaking point and it wouldn't look strange. Then I'm going to start adding in um, my teal color. I knew that I wanted to have a lot of color variation. That's my favorite thing about watercolors, but you certainly don't have to. You could do these all one color and that watercolor look would still be beautiful, but that's not how I roll. So I started with the teal, I put that in, and then I'm going to go back in and add in some, I think this is sap green, just, I'm just going to dot it in a couple of places um, so that the water is moving it, and then I'm going to stop myself from doing anything else with it. I'm going to drop the pigment in, and I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to move on to the next. So again, I'm picking another section where there's a good line break, and then I'm going to fill that all in with water. And then I'm going to drop my pigment in. I am going to speed this process up uh, because I wanted you to be able to see the whole card, but watercoloring does take me a long time. It doesn't take everybody a long time, but it does take me a long time, mostly because I have to fight with myself about fidgeting with it, which would be definitely a tip that I would give to you is put down your pigment and walk away. Stop trying to add more to it. Stop trying to move it around. Stop trying to mix it. Drop the pigment and walk away. Is it going to look like a hot mess? Probably, but it won't once it dries. And that's the thing. Like when you're doing watercolors, you have to kind of trust that the water is going to do the work for you and that you're, you don't need to have anything to do with that process. So here at this point, we're speeding it up. And again, I'm not working in two sections that are next to each other because then I'm going to lose that control. The watercolor will just run rampant, um, which is actually the second way that we're going to watercolor. But uh, here, you know, trying to maintain that control and where my pigment is going, I'm working in, you know, sections of two to three leaves. I'm making some of them darker. I'm making some of them lighter. Um, but don't be, don't mess with it too much. So here I had to take a break to go um, pick up my son. And then um, now I'm back and this is all dry. So I can go ahead and start working on the next section that is um, next to now what are is these dry pieces parts. And it's going to be the same process over and over again of just sectioning them off, putting down that clean water, dropping in the pigment and walking away. So uh, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a little bit of story time because we can't have a 30 minute video and not have any story time. Um, what would I talk about for 30 minutes? This card making process? I mean, I feel like we've covered what we can cover. I'm kidding. We're going to come back and visit some other things, but that'll be a little bit further on uh, in the video. So um, somebody had recently mentioned, I think it was actually, I think it was a lady named Kim, that she... Um, had stopped watching my videos for like a year because um, she just wasn't as interested in my stories. And I totally appreciate her being honest because everybody goes through different seasons of life. And she had been watching when I was living in the Critter Cottage and we had um, nothing but spiders and tree frogs and that little baby mouse. What else was in the house? A slug. Like we had all kinds of things in the house. And so she enjoyed those stories. Wait, we have to go back to the card. So here at this top Monstera leaf, I am going to do the watercoloring a little bit differently and I'm not sectioning it off. So I'm, I'm filling in the entire one side of the leaf with water and then I'm going to drop in the pigment. This is going to give me substantially less control, but it does give you some really beautiful watercolor blends. 
And I think that this type of watercoloring is much more difficult for people because they don't know how to let go of that control. But if you choose to, um, you know, and maybe try it on some images that you're not planning on putting on a card where you're just sitting down and having a, a play. Um, I am going to drop in my pigment and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to walk away without manipulating the pigment, but it's the whole side of the leaf. And this allows the watercolor to create some more organic blends. This Monstera was a little bit more green forward versus the teal, um, but that's okay because they come in kind of all different varying shapes and sizes, and I already knew that I was taking some liberties with the coloring anyway because they're not typically this modeled. Um, so, anywho, so Kim, which I totally appreciate her honesty, was like, you know, it just it just wasn't my thing. Like I was enjoying the stories about the wild critters that were running around your house, but the rest of it just wasn't for me. But now that she's back, thanks Kim. Um, I actually, funnily enough, have a new critter story. So I actually have two. So the other day, this was now, it's probably been like two weeks. Um, I don't because I have a eight year, nine year old. Oh, look at that. I tried to make him younger than he was. I'm a nine year old and a seven month old. Um, plus now I'm working from home and I'm working part time outside of the house and we're still periodically trying to get some furniture done and, you know, like generally keep our house clean and our kids fed, you know, life. Um, so I don't have a lot of time to take breaks for myself or to do self care like I would like. So I know that I'm going to be jumping into the shower super quick um, here, just something of note, if you keep your stamp set on hand, you can kind of follow along the detail lines that the illustrator gives to you to put these back in where they go, um, just to give your, uh, image some more shape. And so that's all I'm doing here is I'm just pulling that stamp set back in so I can kind of guesstimate where these lines need to go and it doesn't just look like a blob. Um, and I'll do that for the top one as well. So, I'm like, I know that I only have like maybe 15 minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and hop in the shower. Um, and so <laughs> Susan Opal, who is hysterical, um, wonderful lady, very talented. Uh, she's been in the industry a long time. She had posted not that long ago about like how there was somebody in a movie that she had watched that like put their face full on in the shower. And she was like, I don't understand this. This is something that people do because like I do not put my face full on in the shower and neither do I. I do not put my face full on in the water in the shower. Um, I like wash my face with like a washcloth. Back to the card real quick. So here we're moving on to that um, caladium, that heart of, heart of Jesus is what it's called. And it's a red and a green flower. They do come in other variations, but this is the one that I chose to paint. And again, this portion of it, I am doing the sectioning um, where I'm filling in with clean water and then I'm putting in um, some, what is this? The quidacridone magenta. And then I've mixed a little bit of that with the, mm, is it the gold? I think it's the gold um, to make a little bit of like a darker red. And so I'll be dropping that in as well. But you can see I am avoiding the sections along the outside that will be green. I'm filling these in. This is very challenging. This is a hard way to watercolor. And that is why I wanted to show you that if you let go a little bit, it can be much easier. Um, so, but I'm going to show you this part first, just like I did with the Monstera, and then I am going to show you the other way. There, the way that this leaf is colored, there are little speckles around the edges. So that is what I'm adding there. Um, I'm adding just a couple of little dots of green, um, into the speckles. And then I will do this again as it dries to make some of those speckles darker. Uh, watercolors is a lot about layering color, which is hard for me because I'm impatient. Um, but anyway, so I do not put my face full on in the water. And this was very confusing to some people because they're like, I always put my face full on in the water. Have you never seen arachnophobia? My people, were you not children of the late 80s, early 90s? Like, I cannot put my face full on in the water because what if there is a spider? 
I cannot do it. So this particular day, I'm like, I got a little bit of time, 15 minutes, whatever, hop in the shower real quick, hop in the shower, uh, you know, hop out of the shower. And so I get into the shower, I'm rinsing off, and then I turn around to get my hair wet. And there is a spider in my shower while I am in my shower. This is unacceptable. I'm in the shower. He's in the shower. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. He keeps moving his little legs. Now he's stationary, but he's moving his legs. It's totally creeping me out. I don't like it at all. So I'm watching him. He's watching me. I mean, I'm like literally like I'm stalking this spider down to make sure that he doesn't move the entirety of the time that I'm in the shower. So I start thinking to myself, like, what do we have in here that I can murder this spider with? Because I cannot continue on this path of madness while I am trying to take a shower. I cannot watch him the whole time. And what if I lose him? If I lose him, I lose my mind. I lose my sanity. I won't be able to make it through. Um, so here in the card, now that that is all done, I'm going to go back in and paint in the green parts. Um, and again, this is very controlled. I did not put any water down with this. I picked up my pigment and I am painting it just like you would paint like acrylics or anything else. Like I am painting it directly into that space. Um, and it doesn't, it, it's the same thing with the veins. Like I've picked up a more concentrated version of that um, red color and I'm going to paint the veins in. I did not wet them beforehand. So this is a very solid line of color. But it doesn't have quite the same movement as the Monstera, in like in the top um, right-hand corner. It doesn't have quite the same movement because I've been very segregated about it. Now we're going to move on to showing you if you just let go of a little bit of control, um, that you can get really beautiful results without having to have every little bit of control over every little section that you're painting. And so once I get these veins filled in, then I'm going to go ahead. This is still me filling in those green areas. Um, but once this part is done, I am going to paint the rest of the leaf with a little bit, a little bit more liberally. So I'm not going to, I'm going to let go of that control. I'm going to fill in the area. I keep bumping the microphone. I apologize because I talk with my hands. Does anybody else have that problem? Um, so I... I'm going to fill in the areas with clean water um, and I'm going to let go of this very controlled look. See how it, it just looks so stiff because I'm painting it in there and it has no movement. Um, so not that it's not pretty or not that it doesn't have a purpose. If you like a very um, like sketch, not a sketched out, if you like a very clean outline, this is a good way for you to watercolor. But if you're trying to achieve more movement, then you're going to want to add more water. More water means a little bit less control. We don't want to get crazy with the water. But so I'm going to fill in this section with the water. And probably the whole time that you have been coloring, water coloring, whatever, you've been told not to mix complementary colors. Because if you mix complementary colors, they make brown. But it depends on how you do it. So here I'm adding in the same reds and pinks that I used for the rest of the leaf. But then while it is wet, I am going to pick up some of that green and I'm going to add it in just on the edge. I'm not going to move it around. I'm not going to mix it. I'm going to do my couple little dots of dropping in color and I'm going to leave it alone. It looks like a little piece of watermelon, but that's okay. I told you before that it would look hideous. Um... But there's, again, there's that trust there. So I'm going to continue on doing this section by section and dropping them in. Um, so anyway, I'm in the shower. There's the spider. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to murder it. And we have what Eric lovingly calls the horse brush. It's an exfoliating brush, but it's like round and it has a wooden back. Um, and it's the only thing in the entire shower that is flat. So this is... This is what I've got. This is my weapon of choice. Um, I wouldn't take it to a zombie apocalypse, but it's me and the spider here, and I gotta make a I gotta make a decision. Uh, it's either shower with the spider or kill it. So I decide I'm gonna kill it. I get my breathing under control. 
because I'm a very paranoid, like I'm scared I'm going to miss it. It's going to fall. There's going to be screaming and sliding and, and all this jazz um, that I'm not prepared for. So I smush it with the back of the horse brush. I smush it up against the wall. And then like I hold the pressure there. Like, I don't know, like, so we can't escape. I hold it there. And then I successfully kill him. So I'm very excited about that. Back to the card. So now that that part is um, starting to dry, I'm going back in and adding more layers of color. Um, so that way that I can get a really good blend, but still keep that um, look that, that the leaf actually has in nature, where it has, um, you know, the green that kind of, uh, the veins kind of come up into the red. And that's the look I'm trying to recreate. So I just keep adding layers um, around the edges to make it a little bit darker, as well as adding my little speckles in. So successfully killed the spider, and now his corpse is in the shower with me. He's stuck to the wall successfully. But I didn't even fix my problem because now I can't stop staring at his corpse. Like he's going to come back alive or something. Like I'm going to have a zombie spider on my hands. Um, so that was very uncool. I, it was a much, I thought I was going to shower for 15 minutes. I probably showered for like seven. Uh, probably not the cleanest shower of my life, but I could not stay in there any longer than necessary because I had a corpse of a spider in there with me. I was not showering alone. Um, then the other spider story that I have for you is, um, so we keep the lights on on our deck. We have dogs here in the card, I'm going back and just kind of making these a little bit softer so that it makes sense for the rest of the leaf because I like that softer look. I feel like it gives it a little bit more movement. So I'm just adding water over the whole thing and then I'm adding just in a little bit more pigment to get it to kind of move together. So we have a spider on our back porch because I always leave the light on. Eric has told me multiple times that this is my fault, but I feel like house security 101, you leave a light on outside of your house, right? Back to the card. So here, we're going to take this liberal approach to watercolor even a little bit further. I'm not great at this technique. I'm not going to pretend like I am. My friend Dawn from W plus 9 is great at this technique um, of creating the shape of the leaves. So I would encourage you to go check out her video. Um, she just did one where she did some palm fronds um, and she's excellent at it. But the whole premise is basically you put your paintbrush down and then as you're pulling the paintbrush, you push in the center to make it a fatter line and then pull up to make it thinner. If you are not successful at it, like I am not most of the time, you I found that I was much better at it when I pulled the line toward me versus away from me. And you'll see that when we do the other side of the palm frond, um, that that's just more comfortable for me. So don't be afraid to turn your paper. But if you have a hard time with it, like I did in the beginning here, you can certainly always go back and paint in that part. But I'm going to tell you that I am not painting in the palm fronds as the stamped image dictates I paint them in. Um, I'm actually almost completely discounting the stamped image, except for the line in the middle that's going to draw everything together. Uh, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know that you didn't follow the stamp exactly. And this gives you a little bit more freedom to play with your strokes and not drive yourself insane trying to paint in all of those little lines. Um, so give this a try again, like you could follow, stamp an image and then follow along with it just to get the general shape of it. Um, so that way you don't have to worry about um, like the design or whether or not your sizing is correct. Um, you don't have to worry about all that jazz. Just stamp the image down and then follow along with it. Here you can see I'm much more successful when I am pulling the line toward myself versus away. Also, I am going in and adding little bits of color, little greens and teals to the different um, fronds before they dry just for some color variation. Uh, and I pulled them up over the Monstera leaf to put this one in the forefront where the other one is still in the background. So we have the spider in the backyard. He is getting so fat. I mean, just so enormous. Um, 
and Eric blames me because I leave the light on. But again, like you're supposed to leave a light on outside your house, just like you're not supposed to have like tall bushes by your windows. Like you're not supposed to give people a place to hide by your house. So that's why I have the light on. Plus I have dogs and when I let them out, I want to see where they're going. But anyway, um, so the other night, if you follow my Instagram, you know that there were pictures of this because my husband thought he was being funny. But I was trying to save two ladybugs from getting murdered um, in my backyard. They were crawling right towards this huge spider's web. So I was like tapping on the glass to get them to go the other way. Um, and I was able to successfully save one of them by basically beating him. I know that sounds um, like it should not be that way. Here, working on the sentiment, I'm just going to be doing some heat embossing. These sentiments are included in the same set. Um, there's some really good ones, uh, but I chose the thank you for always being there because that is going to, this is going to be my Father's Day card for my dad. Um, but anyway, so I imagine that it's a lot what God feels like when he's watching us and making poor decisions. Like, I kept watching the little bugs crawl toward the spider web, and I knew that they were going to be murdered, and they wouldn't listen to me, and I was, like, tapping on the glass trying to get them to go the other way, and it wouldn't work. And so, finally, I just had to go outside into his lair, basically. I risked my own life, um, you're welcome, little ladybug, to use my flip-flop to basically beat the ladybug about the head, um, to knock him off the window so that he wouldn't be murdered. Uh, it was probably like a car accident for him. I feel very badly about it, but the alternative that he didn't know about was to be poisoned, cocooned, and then eaten by the spider, and so I felt like knocking him off the window while traumatizing what it, he was going to be unalived. I kept him alive. You're welcome, the ladybug that we later named Kevin. You're welcome. That's uh, that's. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Um, so now the watercolor is done. The sentiments have been trimmed down um, to little labels. And I'm putting these on with foam tape. And that's really it. That's the entirety of the card. I hope that you learned a little something about watercolors uh, and about how to save uh, ladybugs' lives from spiders. Also, how to defend yourself in the shower. You're welcome. Um, and that is it. So this release is now live in the Gina K store. If you are interested in checking it out, it will be linked below. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.